this this will all be recorded so if you can't hear it it will be posted later but it's more for you guys to uh, be able to ask questions and all the stuff um, so well can you guys see it well enough when it's four like this or do you want me to do one big one All right, one well, big. <clears throat> yeah, okay. So for today, for example, this is just off some of the other stuff. Uh, with the lessons, when you go over it, it'll make a bit more sense. But basically, the way I caught the top today, so if you went, you know, your five minute to start the day, and we draw out, some fibs from the five minute from 7 a.m. So we know that I always say look for a reversal from negative one to 1.5, negative two to negative 2.5, and then the kind of final stretch is four to 4.5. So essentially what these fibs do is they're an add-on for the levels that I um, provide and that I give you guys. They tell you which ones will be key, which ones will not be key. Typically, I will give levels more in ES because ES respects them a lot more than NQ. NQ really likes to paint outside the lines. Like if you look at ES, for example, today, these are the, the levels and you look at, it's barely going above it. And it's really like respecting them a lot more so, and it's a lot easier to play at level to level. Um, but we'll focus on NQ because I think that's what most people trade. So you kind of have this zone here and I like to take entries in this area here. That's where I'm looking to take my entries. I kind of have a habit because I used to trade with trailing drawdowns to size heavy and kind of create parameters where there's very little, if any, drawdown when you're sizing heavy. So even if you go to trade 15 contracts here you're still like you're not hitting dll granted i don't recommend this but that was the whole kind of premise behind the trailing drawdown because of if anyone has traded trailing drawdown you know what it's like but <clears throat> what you can do we'll get rid of that and we'll make it kind of more reasonable let's say three with um xfas now what i like to do is just get rid of that what you can do now is okay you go to the 15 minute i typically use the 15 minute and your resistance would be that your break level would be that and you go down to the five minute and you can just refine it where you're looking for We'll leave the break level there, but your resistance kind of comes that area now. You go down to the three minute, and that actually is just gonna keep changing. And this all makes sense when you look at um, the lessons, what I'm doing in here, but this is just a kind of review. And then you can go down to the one minute and do the exact same thing. And now all of a sudden when you're on the one minute, you're gonna get a much more refined entry point. So now when we go over, you kind of have two confluences of where you're looking and reasons why. So this is your whole area and lo and behold, the middle of it lines up quite well with um, where your resistance level per the highs is. So even if you're looking at three contracts to sell and even if you stack them here, your stop loss is above the break level because if it gets above this wick, you're basically saying, forget this, it's not nonsense, I don't want it. But that's $180 risk. And your reaction, pretty much instantaneously, and you can drop down to the lower time frames, so we get a more accurate picture of what kind of reaction we actually get. Within 15 seconds, you're up within a few more seconds, you're up a thousand. And the way everything functions, because these levels, I essentially what I have 
as you can see, I refined it through every time frame. But because I have this normally on my screen where I have all four, I know, because we drew it, I know that this area is a level on the five minute, on the three minute, on the 15 minute. So I can reasonably expect where, where would I want to take profit? Well, your first swing point that created this failed high is right here. So you can actually look to take your first profits there. Um, one of the things that I kind of teach in the course as well, there's, there's highs that matter and highs that don't. So when you look at this low here, it's a failed low because it didn't create a new high. Whereas this high up here, and even if you look back, it rejected and it did create a new low down here because we are overall bearish looking at previous market structure. We haven't been able to get above here. So you're going to view this high much differently than this low, for example, this higher low, or this one here, etc. But you're essentially what you're doing is you have to make sure that you're staying on the same time frame for your take profits. So if your level is drawn in this situation, it's drawn from a 15 minute, which we showed, a five minute, a one minute, etc. Now we know, okay, we can target one minute areas or one minute levels, two, three minute levels, five minute levels, 15 minute levels, etc. So then when you look at it kind of on the higher time frame and we watch this reaction when I called the low of the day, now that we know it's rejected here, so we can get rid of this fib, we can get rid of this level. I don't really draw them out, I eyeball them typically when I have all this here and I can just see. And I also have my ES as well because ES reacted at that same level that we had here at the same time of day. Um, but basically then what I do is I'll go like this. Okay, well, we have our one minute reaction. This was a sweep. We can draw our fibs out from the one minute. We can look at how that looks like on the three minute. Can't really see much on the three minute, but on the five minute, once things have been developed, you can refine it where it's to here. It gives you more targets. You go to the 15 minute, and we know that it was a 15 minute level. We can draw it all the way down to there. You can even, for the next few days, exaggerate it to here, but it doesn't really serve a purpose. Uh, hold on. Let me just finish my thought and I'll answer your question. This doesn't serve a purpose because unless you're trading in a live account, you're not going to be able to hold your short for this potential target. So what makes the most sense when you kind of look at all the time frames and you, you find an area and then I looked, I was like, oh, okay, 566 six for the low day. Well, where's my level? I look to the left now and I see the exact same thing just in the opposite direction. Here's a three minute. Here's my break level. I go to the five minute. Okay, five minutes the same. I go to the 15 minute. And 15 minutes the same. I can go down to the one minute. The one minute I can go and refine to this. And now when I scroll over to the right, the one minute doesn't hit. But as I taught, when you see this, you want, you're looking at a specific area. We have our fib here, negative four. Again, our zone would be this. And we're looking for the market to show us something of a structure flip. And if you want to kind of blindly enter it, you can, and you can just gauge it. Like this is a pretty big area. You can go back and look and maybe take a five minute zone We'll get rid of this because that's the fib but now you can look at kind of the five minute zone and again i like to take my entries from the bottom and the middle so 50 percent onwards so it'd be kind of that area is what i'm looking and if this breaks i don't like it um are you drawing your fibs from the highest point of the previous day no it's not the it's not about the previous day it's about um it's about sweeps so 
this right here was very much a sweep. The same way if we flip it, so we have this zone here. Yeah, exactly. It's a sweep manipulation of the high and highs and lows. You're, you're, you're looking for that last sweep before you get a shift in market structure. So this is a perfect example at the bottom of the day when I posted this trade. You look at this right here. Well, this, this leg right here, you have the low here made. It's a new low for the day. It didn't break anything here. So you're looking for, okay, I'm looking for a reaction. Let me see a market structure flip. Well, here's my low, my high, and then this high breaks this right here. Once that's broken, now we can do the same thing in reverse. And if the market is going to continue going up, we look for it to go up, right? And where do we look for it to reverse? From negative one to 1 1.5 is the first point of where we look for it to reverse. And sorry, this wasn't the trade that I took. It was actually in here. And you do again, the exact same thing here. Here's another sweep, harder to see from the one minute, but you draw out the same thing. And that's where I got the 4.5. And then I was like, oh, a VWAP. And you look again, like you can keep, you can always just keep these on as reference. And it, what, it, what it's telling you essentially is which swing points are important where here's one to 1.5 okay so this is a swing point that's important i want to see what it does here and as i taught in the lesson the support and resistance i teach you guys the greedy entry so really your support and resistance over here it's this i'll go to a higher time frame but really what it is is this whole bar it's this whole area but that's too much like that's way too much room for error um, sorry, it's this whole bar here, but that's a huge, like that doesn't help anyone Be like, Oh, yo, look, I caught the bottom, but the range is 50 points ridiculous. So I always say, look at the greedy entries, which is the body to the wick and vice versa for the highs. So your high, what you're looking for is this would be your resistance. This would be, if it breaks that we don't like it. And what does that line up with? Negative 2 to 2.5, right? So then we can go down in time frames, refine it on the one minute it's to there. So now, or sorry, the three minutes to there. So now you're like, okay, maybe I'm looking for shorts in this area. Now, if I go to the one minute, the one minute's even more refined. And now you're just, you're just, all you're doing with this is you're reducing your risk. Because if you want to blindly take it, and I like to, from here up to here is where I like to take it, but let's say you take your short there, three contracts, if it goes above, you don't like it. But maybe, the thing you got to keep in mind with NQ, and this is why yes, is a little better, I'll respect the levels a little, and you won't get wicked out like this, maybe if you're up on the day, you can just put an arbitrary number of, I want to risk 500 bucks. And then if you did that, you would get, a quick thousand pretty quickly obviously it's not going to work every time if you have a hard stop i usually have no stop loss i have a mental stop and this is the reason why because in these situations you get wicked out down here you wouldn't and i also like to look at the seconds chart because for example here depending on how good you are at reading candlesticks you're seeing a wick okay kind of like a half doji another wick but now if i drop into that same time frame on the 15 second we're talking about that manipulation right that sweep that one more sweep well here's your one more sweep on the 15 second so when you draw that same fib the other way you get look at the accuracy you get now on 15 second you don't expect it to go past negative one 1.5 because where's your next swing point on the 15 second is right here. So that's your next take. Like that that would be your take profit point is here. It might go all the way. But again, you look, all that's happening with these fibs is they're always lining up with swing points. Two, here's a swing point. One, here's a swing point. And all it's telling you is which ones you could potentially expect a reaction at. That's really what the fibs are for. It's not like a hard, hard line in the sand. Um, 
and then you can even look at the three minute like you look at this it's body this one doesn't even go across it and it's just straight rocket down but that's essentially what I do I don't draw all this out just because the market moves as fast as it does but you can pretty much take that on any day we can just go back to a different day for example where are we here Friday here's Sunday here's Monday so I'm looking at the three minute chart right now and like I said I have one five three fifteen for my charts and then on another screen I have the one hour four hour but if you look at this this right here was a sweep of these kind of lows overnight this leg right here and it didn't quite crack it so you have this you have a bunch of levels here but what I do if I'm looking at this kind of a bunch of relatively equal lows I'll take the lowest one so the lowest one on the three minutes here which we don't actually hit right maybe if we go to the five minute see on the five minute it'd be different the lowest one would actually be this which you do hit you go to the 15 minute in that same area the 15 minute and you just keep refining it and what sometimes the 15 minute will give you a, a smaller entry sometimes the one minute sometimes the three but you kind of just have all three because you have an area where you're looking for see the one minute in this case comes down actually to here but you have all this because I have the real estate screen space, I don't draw it all out. But now I'm like, okay, I'm looking for a potential reversal in that. We'll go back to the 15 minute and we'll just draw that area out. And we have our break level of this. And now we go back to the three minute, go back to that same day. And I can look at, okay, for my projections down, I'm going to look at this area here because it pumped because I'm waking up for New York. So I'm, I'm seeing I'm waking up to price being here and I'm seeing this and then I'm looking to the left and I'm like, OK, high, high, highs, highs. OK, it ran and then it ran down. OK, so I'm going to draw my projection for the downside from that high to that low. OK, now I'm going to look to the left in this area. OK, I maybe expect a price reaction here. And then I expect another price reaction here. What is there at four here? Well, the support's down here. And then another support down here. And that's a little far, right? Um, so you can take the five minute and you would adjust it to this. And now you're getting one to 1.5 for New York open and bounce. So now when you go to that one minute, And we have an idea of what's all over here. And we have our, this is the five minute, but you can also refine your fibs on the one minute. And I do it on the one, the three, the five, all of them. I kind of want to know where I expect price to react. And here's 9.30 open right here. And what does it do? It sweeps the highs and then dumps. So you know you have resistance up here from the levels from the manipulation that it went down so if it does pop up you can short up here and when it's going down where can i expect it to go where can i expect bounces in the negative 1 to 1.5 area in the negative 2 to 2.5 area and as you see if you draw that out and granted this is open so they like to liquidate everyone and fuck everyone over but if you're looking and you're taking trades there and you're taking another trade, whoops, you're taking another trade here, your risk during open is going to be bigger. You're going to see more drawdown. So maybe don't go three contracts, go one. But even with three contracts on both these ideas, this is the drawdown you're seeing. 390, 195, and here, if we zoom in, you're getting a pop to 1300. Here, you're getting a pop to 1600 at the top. 
Now, I'm not saying you're going to obviously hold for all that, but <clears throat> you're risking, your risk to reward is very, very skewed. And you know which areas you expected. And overall, looking at this, we're down. All it did was sweep up here, look at these wicks, and it's heading down. So that we, we have to understand and know that even if we're longing in this situation, we're longing in the wrong direction. We're, we're not, we're going against where the market wants to go. Um, so you see even here, negative 4.5, it reaches and it goes way past it. I'll get rid of this quickly. And even if I go now to the 15 minute for that same day, I'm looking, okay, my 15 minute manipulation is this. Get rid of this crap. So I know I'm targeting, okay, negative ones here. So if these lows don't hold, where's my next area here, which isn't much of one, right? That's that I, that's very argumentative whether that's actually a swing point. Then I would look down to here. And again, your resist, your support would be there, but your break level is way down here. So if this breaks, this is no longer valid. And you can see on the 50 minute, like it didn't close a body below the break level, but obviously like you long here, 85s, you're, that's, you're sizing heavy, that's a little bit of DLL happening. But then you can go down in time frames and just, oops, refine it. So this whole mess here, I would just do my five minute to there, my break level. And now if I'm looking for entries, I'm looking at the bottom 50% to 100%. So now my zone where I'm looking for longs is here. And if I drop down more time frames, my entry is there now. So now all of a sudden, you know your five minute bottom half is this, your three minute top half is this. Let's see what the one minute looks like. One minute's essentially the same as the three minute. So now I'm looking for structure flip here. And you can see it on the one minute if you train your eye, you essentially have this is a high, and this is the low that's made from that. Why is this not working? That's the low that's made from that candle. So I'll get rid of these zones. We'll just remember that they're there. So here's your sweep on this candle, and then that gets broken here. And it's hard to see that on the one minute. You have to kind of learn to train your eye to see that, okay, well, here's my high, here's my low high of this candle, the low of that candle, that high gets broken. Okay, so I'm expecting a flip. And that's where if you dump yourself, if you have trading view, you go into the lower time frames, you're gonna see that structure flip happen sooner. Yeah, you can the lower the lower like you look, here's a fifteen second, right? If we look at the fifteen second in that same area, here's our high. That made this low that high got broken right here then this low came into play it didn't break here and then here's our sweep where it broke right here and then this high is now the one we're looking at to get broken it gets broken right and now we look for an entry it's messy you don't get a very good entry in here and you can look what does the 30 second look like well let's see um, So the 30 second, same kind of thing. It doesn't look much, much different, but you can even go down to the five second. Assuming you have the um, premium on trading view, hopefully it gives me, yeah, okay, it gives me data. And now what you have is even kind of more. Here's your high, gets broken, comes down. So you expect it to potentially go up, but you're also remembering I'm looking at the five second chart and we also have our levels here. Yes, I deleted them, but they're there. We know they're there. We know where they are. We know where we're looking for our entry. Well, here's my low, my high, broken, breaks right here. 
I expect it to come back into about 50% of this. Here it comes back, takes off. It doesn't come back quite to 50%, but like I said, with your support and resistance, your support in this case, on the five second time frame with the same context applied, the entire candle, we like to be greedy and only look at this right here as our support. But now you have to bear in mind, we're dealing with a five second time frame. So I don't expect on the five second for it to come all the way down here. And if I go back to the one minute to show you what this all looks like, it's all in this wick that this is happening. So it's you can't tell, right? But what you can look at is, okay, the same concept on the one minute. Well, here's the swing point, because we know this is now a swing point from looking at the lower time frames. We can look at this whole candle as support. And when price comes back in, does it go past 50% of it? No. Is it waking at the bottom? Yes. What does the three minute look like in the same area? This candle breaks, this one wicks, gets bought up. Because the other thing you have to keep in mind is how are these, Tra the thing that I don't like about trading view is you don't see how this candle's painting. This candle might, it opened up here. Well, maybe it potentially, I don't know, but I'm assuming based on the reaction here, it probably dumped down and then got bought right back up. So when you see that buy right back up, we want to see bullish candles with wicks at the bottom. That This is a good sign, this is a good sign, this is a good sign. It starts to become a bad sign when we see the wicks big at the top. We don't want big wicks at the top. You, so the second, yeah, so you can see better on the 30 second. You can see better, uh, what are you saying? In seconds chart, you can see a lot better entries. Yeah, the thing you got to keep in mind is on the second entries, on the seconds chart, you'll see better entries, but you have to have the context. If you're just blindly looking at the second chart, you're going to get ripped, especially on NQ. But if you know you're in an area here that we've drawn out from our left, from our higher time frame as support, and we start to see this flip, we're like, okay, yeah, I like this. Maybe I'll, I'll take one here. And then as I start to see the flip, I can add and add and add. And then as it goes, it goes. But don't blindly go and take second entries because you're going to when these paint, you're going to get ripped and you're going to see it go against you and you're like, oh my God, it's reversing. When re in reality, it's not. If you're looking at the higher time frames and know the what the kind of context is of those higher time frames, you're going to know, okay, I have supports here. I have negative four here. Okay, here's my break level. If it breaks, it's probably going to this area then. And you kind of just form context like that. And it's, it just happens over and over and over again. Yeah, that's, yeah, I've, yeah, exactly what Kyle said. Seconds time frame can make emotions go crazy. And really, the, I'm not promoting the seconds time frame. I don't trade off of it. If you don't have it, it doesn't matter. You just have to teach yourself to learn how to read the one minute. The problem is when you look at this area on the one minute, I don't know how it was painted. Like, I don't know how these candles formed. I don't know if it started up here, went down, got back up, then went back down. That's what the seconds chart tells me. Because as it's moving along, I'm not going to remember, well, wait, what did this candle do when we're on this candle? I'm going to forget that. And that's where the second time frame can give me context. The other way to make it kind of easy for you is what are the wicks telling you? If you have, we have our level roughly here that we had, let's say, let's actually draw it out so we have it accurately um, we'll draw I think it was the three minute so we have our th I really like the three minute chart but we have our three minute level here if I'm seeing on the one minute and I don't have let's say I don't have access to the second charts and I'm seeing this at my level and now the candles are flipping and it's showing no interest in turning back, then I can be like, okay, here's my one minute level, the whole thing, the whole candle. When it comes back into this kind of area, maybe I'll look for a long. 
I know there's ICT stuff, you have your fair value gaps here, and you see these fair value gaps, they don't provide much. Well, why? Because as much as people love and hate ICT, whatever, I use some of his concept, I know I'm aware of his concepts, but it's really just where is the high? So this low here, this low right here is responsible for sending price to here. So until this breaks, we're not going to here. Well, it tried to break it right here. And now if we look at, I hate that drawing thing, but now if we look at today, what happened? All we did is retest that same area that caused this run up two more times. So now it's been tested once, twice, three times. And this is really the one that started everything on a one minute time frame. And if we just zoom out on the 15 minute and you kind of just go along like that, you have your, your lows and highs. The ones that matter essentially what it is, is I'm just going to delete all this shit and I'm going to do one quick thing because I don't want to keep deleting and drawing all over my charts and then having to fucking edit it. Uh, okay. I think I used this for a level, but I was drawing shit out. <laughs> but when you look at this is the low that broke structure to the upside. So it's a valid or legacy or whatever you want to call it, legacy low. Whereas if you look at this high, it failed to shift market structure. It failed to break these lows. It got to them and then rejected. And then this high here managed to break this, but where did we ultimately come from? Here. And then as you kind of keep going back, down here. So that's kind of, you have your highs and lows that are responsible. Like, so here's your high that's responsible for breaking these lows here. It got broken on here. And then it came back up. It didn't break this high and price went back down. Overall, price is essentially going sideways in this big box on a higher time frame. But because we trade daily, as much as I like having context from the higher time frame, you go to the four hour. Now, if you go to the four hour, it's the same concept. Well, this low here is responsible for breaking this high, but it didn't break here. This is all time highs, so we didn't break that. And where's the low that broke all time highs? You have to really go back, right? This one here is responsible for breaking this here. And it shot price up to here. And then this high failed to break market structure because it would have to go down here to break the market structure. It sent price higher. So that's kind of how you have to look at it from the higher time frame context. But even with that in mind, we as day traders, it's a problem. Like, do you really think price is going to go down to here? That's where it ultimately, that would be the next test. If this holds, we're bullish because this is the the next swing point. And really the one we want to see hold is this for bullish because that's the one that broke market structure to the upside because you had this high here. I think this was all-time highs at the time. Came down, broke all these swing points, didn't break this one. So it's still kind of going up. So if you draw out and path it, even on the four hour, and this is where we have to go way back, but I think this is almost too much because as intraday traders, and this is now we don't even have information. This is why I use the this chart. So really what started this whole run is down here in October. And you can see that here's our low that made this high and as it's going higher highs, higher lows, right? This low doesn't get broken right here. We continue higher. Comes down here, it breaks this one, but where are we originating from here? doesn't even come close to touching these, comes back up, fails to make a high, comes down, and then finally breaks the low. So then this point right here is the one that broke these points on the higher time frame. So until we see 
and as you see I have it labeled, that break, really, we're sitting up here, and this is just in the middle. This is just a pullback, right? Oh, what fucking bashy. <laughs> so that's essentially how I look at and utilize the stuff I taught you guys. And you can just cycle down in time frames and get your levels. And when you don't see things break, like today, we didn't break these highs. This held during, this would be London, and it held during New York. And all New York did was come up, sweep this, and boom, there you have it. And then kind of some extra sauce, if you go, ES failed to break any low, still feels bullish overall. Yeah, so ES, key levels on ES here. And I just kind of draw them out daily, but it's very much going sideways in terms of ES. Um, the other thing I look at as well is if you go to and you have to pay for this. Pre-market highs and lows on QQQ. Because what, um, what these are, are dark pool prints. It's basically large money getting their orders filled. And you look, it didn't break the pre-market highs. Um, hold on one sec, my wife's messaging me. That pretty much kind of summarizes, yeah, you have to pay for this data to get the pre-market highs and lows. Like in trading view, you have to pay for it. But you can kind of see when you go back, here's your pre-market highs, rejected. Here's your pre-market highs. Here's your pre-market low. Look at this candle, Look at the fucking size of it. But it doesn't break and it goes up and then it breaks the highs. Um, I gotta get going. But that's essentially how I look at and utilize the levels and the stuff that I taught in the course. Yeah, that's someone getting their order fill because basically what happens is um, if the market moves too much, too fast, they shut down trading for the day. So the people, the big hedge funds and stuff that need a lot of liquidity can't get orders filled during that time because it would halt market trading. Um, but I'm going to stop the recording there because i got to run. <laughs>